Okay, so the, uh, the bouncing ball problem is a favorite of your examiners, your the people who write your test software, the people who write your provincials. Um, not that, you know, no guarantees, but, you know, if I had to make a prediction for your provincial exam this year, I'd probably bet that, that this would be the type of question that's on there. I don't know why they're obsessed with bouncing balls, but, I mean, uh, it's yeah, a common yeah, one. I'd say math. at least, what's that? Good math. Good math? I guess it makes a good math problem. So, my, uh, my tip for you when you do these kinds of problems is to always draw a picture, okay? You'll see if you have a good picture, th this problem's pretty simple. So that's where we'll start. So, um, I don't know why, but I always like to start with a little platform. You don't have to do that part of it. But here's the bouncing ball, and it's going to roll off. Why can't the ball just teleport into very kind of thin air? Something like this, it's keeping about 75% of its height. Okay? Don't worry about your picture, it doesn't have to be perfect. But it's going to help us illustrate some of these ideas. Okay? So, the first term and the common ratio in this geometric sequence, well, the ball first starts, it has a height right now of 3 meters according to this picture. Okay? So it says uh, it starts at a height of 3 meters when it, when it falls. If it rises to 75% of what it used to be, then this time it'll be two and a quarter meters, or three times 75%. Okay. The next time it'll go three, 75% of what it was before, so it'll be 75% squared. And it would keep going on in this pattern, so we won't do any more after this, but this is the pattern. Okay. So this little picture only takes about 30 seconds to produce, and it can help um, stop confusion from happening when you're trying to answer these questions. So I'll show you where the confusion is in just a second. First, let's answer this question. The first term, if this was a sequence, would be 3. The common ratio would be 75%. And you can see that if you're looking at these terms here. Okay? It's, it's apparent that is a geometric sequence that's happening. Now, if you look at those terms and you wanted to tell me what's the general term for the sequence, well, then it's pretty simple. It's just a geometric sequence, which is Tn is 3 times 0 0.75 to the n minus 1. Okay. But here's where it can be tricky, and this is why you want a good picture. So what height does the ball reach after 6 bounces? So with a picture, you know, this is one thing that I never, you know, I never try to memorize a formula or anything for these applications. I just look at my picture and I, and I remember the pattern. So for example, in this one, after six bounces, let's see what happens, see if we can figure out the pattern. So here's bounce number one. Here's the height, maybe I'll change the color of the pen in just a second. Let's grab purple. So here's bounce number one, okay? Here is height number one, okay? Bounce number two height number two, bounce number three, height number three. If you look at that, would you be able to tell me where will it be after the sixth bounce? What's the height? Someone give me a formula? Sure, DJ, go for it. Uh, three times mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. See, real nice and simple, I can watch the pattern as it comes out of the picture. Because sometimes this question, instead of saying after six bounces, it could just as easily say before it hits the ground. The sixth time. Okay. So it could be slightly different. What's the maximum height it reaches before it hits the ground the sixth time? So now, if I was to update my picture, um, let me get rid of these, just so we can show you the difference. Now it's asking for before. So that means if this is the first time it touches the ground, here is the maximum height before it touches the ground the first time. If this is the second time it touches the ground, here is the maximum height. Third time, maximum height. Can you figure this uh, pattern out now? What's the exponent going to be then? Five. Right. One less. So third time means it's second exponent. Second time, first exponent. Okay? So if it was a sixth time before it hit the ground, it would be 0 0.75 to the fifth. 
So again, that's why I like a picture. It's worth a thousand words. Hey, there you go. Okay. So other than those kind of questions about the height the ball reaches, this is also a typical uh, style question for the ball being dropped. So let's say this time it's dropped from 20 meters, it returns to 70% of its previous height. So find the total distance traveled. Now it doesn't always say this, but they mean up and down. That's what they mean when they say total distance. Oh. It means how much the ball has bounced up and down. Okay. Um, when the ball hits the ground the 10th time, and then we'll also take a look at uh, before coming to rest, when it stops bouncing. So again, before I even think about answering this, the first thing I will do is a really bad picture, I mean a, a picture. So let's see here, 70%, I don't know, it's going to look about like this. Okay. So here's my picture. And I'm actually going to, we're going to do what the ball would have done here as far as vertical distance goes. So here's what happens. The first time the ball falls down, right? Hits the ground, bounces back up. Hits the ground, uh, doesn't hit anything, it just gravity kicks in, falls down, bounces back up, falls down, bounces back up, and keeps going. So maybe I'll add in the last uh, one as well. So what you can see with the purple and blue lines, that's the vertical distance that we're looking for. Okay. So does anybody notice anything about that? Uh, tell me what you notice when you look at it. Anything about it. There's some really obvious stuff that we do need to, to mention. So what do you think? Sure, DJ. That's huge. It seems so obvious, but there's no vertical distance that goes up. This does not happen on the first bounce. Right? There's only one direction down when it falls. Okay? After that, it does both of them. Okay? So, anybody else care to add anything to this? Well, I kind of spoiled it. I did just sort of said it. Every bounce after that has both. It has two of them. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to just say, let's pretend for now. Let's pretend that this black line was there. Then the problem would be pretty simple. All I have to do is double the distance that I was doing. So for example, here, I would go 20 meters plus 20, whoops, times 0.75, 20 times, sorry, 20 times 0.75 squared. And I could just add those up and double them. Oh, right, that was the last question, thank you. Um, 0.7. So I could just add up all those distances, and I'd be done as soon as I doubled them. But what's wrong with doubling it? Too much? Too little? Just right? Why is it too much? Because I only have one bounce in the first one. But that's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to double it, and I'm going to remove the first term. So I'll show you what I mean here. I want the sum of the first ten terms. I will double them. That means I've also added that thing which is not there. So in order to balance this out, I have to take it away. Okay. Now, there's two of everybody except the first term. There would have been two. I took one away. Does that kind of make sort of sense? Okay. So um, this, this then becomes 2 times 20, 1 minus 0.7 to the 10, 1 minus 0 0.7 minus 20. And so I end up with, uh, I think I end up with, unless I put it in my calculator wrong, about 109.6 uh, meters. So this is the key idea here is it's easiest to just double everybody and then take away that little bit here, which was uh, too much. Okay. So now if we want to know the total vertical distance before this ball comes to rest, meaning it stops bouncing, 
Okay, where I live in that theoretical math world, where like we can keep cutting that gold bar in half over and over without any problems, right? Obviously, in the real world, you drop that ball, it's not going to bounce forever. It's going to start rolling a lot quicker than you think. But in math land, it bounces forever. So if it comes to rest, we really mean by rest, the only way that's going to happen in math land is if there's an infinite number of bounces, right? We keep shrinking the height all the way to zero. Right? So this means if we want to calculate the total vertical distance before coming to rest, you need the infinite series formula. So I'm going to see if you can figure out what that would be then, its total vertical distance if it was allowed to bounce forever. Okay, so even though this bounces forever and ever and ever, it just means there's more purple arrows in here. It just keeps going and going and going and going. And more blue arrows too. And it keeps going and going and going. So the pattern is the same. It's just that now we have an infinite series. So we should have two times the infinite series minus the first term. So in some ways, it's actually easier to figure this out. And I believe it was... Uh, 133, is that? 113.3, I knew there was a bunch of threes in there. I was trying to remember what the, looks like that. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, about the extent that we'll take a look at these applications. I'm gonna let you take a look at your homework now.